Hells and welcome to Canadian black metal rawness in this review. This one is the trem uh, trembling void with the burning question. And the question is, do you look like that when you're staring at the broken mirror? Guess not, but fancy uh, nail paint nonetheless. This is the debut album by this one man band, or should we say solo project. And uh, it's a good one. That's why I requested it personally from the label, and thanks to the label I got it uh, delivered here. Because this is the kind of stuff that I guess, I'm not gonna tear it down, it's gonna just break, it's very too tight. Well, this is the kind of black metal coming from the black metal underground that isn't exactly um, very appealing to the so-called black metal tourists, you know, the random ones who are like, all about the big songs, hit songs, and when it's sounding nicely, or just, you know, bands like Dimbo Borger, Behemoth, or the Cradle of Phil. And then there's his underground, who is just like, okay, we're ready to uh, tackle these raw end, uh, primitive sounding black metal ones, where it is very, very different. Uh, Trembling Void is, how does it put it? It's a very primitive uh, time leap, quantum leap to, um, to an era where things were very, very lo-fi in terms of uh, production, but also when riffs and songs and, you know, creation was very, very different. Now, when I'm listening to this album, it's running for some 47 minutes or so. Uh, the thing here is, it's resonating me with uh, kind of a 1990s vibe. And it's, you know, bringing me back individual parts that is, Ideas that were happening some 30 years ago. Some of these ideas remind me of early Burzum. That's when it gets more melodic. And also those very uh, distorted vocals, which probably wouldn't work out that well uh, on live situation. I mean, they're highly affected. <laughs> high, high effects used, uh, strong effects. That is to create this kind of inhuman um, screamier or rasp, not exactly raspier, not exactly high pitchy screamy, but the kind of uh, inhuman sound. It's not exactly robotic, but when you're thinking about some early Burzum ones, you hear that layer of distortion creating the sound that is very inhumane. And that's for some people like really good stuff, and some people it's like, no, it's, that's too much, you really can't do that on live uh, situation. And like I said, some of the riffs are very burzum like but there are parts where this sounds no burzum at all. Some parts remind me of Ilion, very simple, very raw and uh, primitive in nature. And then there are riffs which don't really resonate me in the sense that they're, you know, getting me the feeling like this band sounds like that and that. So there are variation. There's certain kind of diversity happening, even though throughout the whole course uh, of these 40 minutes and then some seven songs, it is raw. It is lo-fi and it's ugly as hell. The thing here is, if you have to have the kind of acquired taste to enjoy this kind of album, because in essence, this is very much like antithesis to highly produced, overproduced, um, high budget albums where everything sounds cl crystal clear and very powerful and all. Here everything sounds kind of a weak. And I think it's done purposefully, not lack of budget or whatever, because nowadays basically anybody can do just, you know, with their laptop or even, I guess, smartphones and tablets to achieve a certain level of, you know, good production. Uh, but here things are very much like going back to the basement or cellar, underground, uh, to a cave or whatever, and just kind of uh, turn those knobs and settings into... Uh, in a way that it's creating this level of rawness where the sound resonates kind of uh, bad and wrong. But at the same time, you can still clearly hear those riffs, so it's not like it's overly distorted or destroyed sound, like it seems some Portuguese bands seem to do. That is kind of hiding whatever is happening in the, ter in the section of guitars and drums or whatever. So here you can actually kind of make sense what is happening and the, what is making sense in essence is that the riffs are good. Some parts are more melodic, some are very much straightforward and to the point. And uh, in that sense, this could have actually been a little bit better produced in terms of like giving it extra punch, a kick in the butt, so to speak. But to be honest, I don't mind because I mean, I grew up with albums and even demos, which 
were very lo-fi and you kind of had to live with it in order to like the music. Some people are not going to like this for the reasons listed and some people will probably find this very, very enjoyable for the reasons listed. So, in my opinion, I feel this is very much an acquired taste of an album. I'm not recommending to most black metal people out there. I'm recommending to these people who are looking for some kind of abyss in terms of production and also the grim primitive feeling. And also when you have gone through all the pure and nice and beautiful and clean and all that stuff. So whenever you're bored with your next atmospheric beautiful black metal feelings and you want some dirt and rust and death and decay with your music, this is an album to go to. Like said, not exactly for everybody. Maybe do grim and primitive for most people enjoying basic grim black metal. Not in my top 10 of albums for this year, but still likable. A good one in its own old-fashioned ways. So Trembling Void is here and I'm, I hope this uh, project will keep going on. But maybe next time with a little bit of an extra punch and it would be better. This is Rauda's review of The Burning Question by Trembling Void. So check out the links for some music samples and what can I say? I hope you like the music and if not, well, you have been warned. See you soon with more reviews coming away. Bye bye.